Hi everybody, it's Karen Friedland here from KarenFriedland.com and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Um, we seem to be doing better now and I'm just um, trying to find where I'm going. Okay, uh, this week I wanted to talk to you about color. Now, those of you who know my work know that it's all about color and um, it's kind of an obsession of mine. In fact, that was something that, um, who was it? Monet, I think, said that color was his constant obsession and I agree wholeheartedly. And while I work with and know all the elements of art and what makes a good painting, for me, the thing that makes me happiest and makes my paintings sing is color. And you can see just with the one behind me that I'm working on my easel, I am um, not shy about color. So there are all sorts of ways to work with color and there are things that you need to know about color that will make your life a lot easier, that will allow you to create more colors and greater depth in color. And so I thought I would talk about that a little bit today. So um, we're going to start, let me just reach over here so we can start with the color wheel. This is a color wheel I made, and if you go to my website, karenfriedland.com, you can get my free course on the color wheel. So um, just a quick review, red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors. That means that they can't be made by mixing any other colors. And the colors that are made by mixing them, red and yellow become orange, red and blue become purple or violet, and yellow and blue become green. And so when I said, asked if you wanted to play along to bring one of the colors of the color wheel, I meant one of these outside colors. Now in between each color on the wheel, I've shown how the colors transition through mixing from red to orange, orange to yellow, and so forth. But what I didn't talk about is how you get lighter, darker, in between mixed, all these things, other colors. So today I thought it would be fun to do some color mixing and we are going to work with values and values are the lightness or darkness of the color. So um, I thought it would be fun to make a magic square. And what I've done here is I've created a box with nine boxes within it. They're two inches wide because it's easier for you to see that. But if you want to make yours just one inch boxes, you might find that easier and you might want to have more of them instead of having three across, you might want to have five across and make it 25 boxes to show more of the shades and tones and tints that you can mix yourself. But what we're going to work with today, I, I love red, so I figured we would work with, I would work with red. You can work with any of the colors on the color wheel. So I'm starting with uh, right here. I've got two blobs of it. Cadmium red medium hue. And this is from Liquitex. I use all different brands of, in fact, today I've got three paints, three different brands. They're all very good. Then I have golden. And this is carbon black. You will notice that if you go into the paint store that there are several shades of black 
carbon black is one of the darkest. I think bone black is the darkest. Uh, you could even use Payne's gray for this. And then I've got white, and this comes from uh, Dealer and Rowney System 3. So I've got three different brands, all of them really good. What I'm going to start with, since this um, this presentation is going to be all about mixing a color. I'm going to start with our base color in the magic in the center of the magic square, and that's red, the cadmium red medium. So I'm just painting that in so I'll know where I started. Trying not to dilute it, but it has gotten a little diluted. And so that is my base color. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about tints. When you add white, to a color that's called a tint. So I'm going to start with just a small amount of white. Oh, that's really more than I wanted. And that makes a tint of red that we usually call pink. So you can see this is cadmium red medium, sometimes mixing with um, white will show you the true properties of the color. And you can see by having this mix that the cadmium red medium is really, or the cad reds are really orange hued red and that they were really a warm red is what we would say because they lean to the warm colors if you were doing a quin red, it would probably be more blue toned and we call that a cool red. So I'm just adding some more white in here and we're going to get a nice light red tint as they're called. And I'm um, just for the fun of it and for variety's sake, I'm going to do it down here. Here we've got a pretty pink. And um, even though we call it pink, it is still a red. That is, it's a tint of red because that's the base color. So we've got that beautiful pink there. And I'll decide later whether we're going to add another one, another tint. So again, when the color is mixed, the hue, which is what the base color is called, is the hue. When it is mixed with white, it's called the tint. Next thing I want to show you is when we mix it with black because that's called the tone and black is a very strong color so you only need a tiny tiny bit i use just the corner of my brush as you can see the brush i'm working with today is not a fancy one at all and um, in fact there's so much black there i'm not even going to Mix it into that little pile. I'm just going to mix it right here. So I get the tone. And as you're mixing, I should have done it with a palette knife. That's more accurate. But as you're mixing, if it's coming out dark, you can bring it to a separate place on your palette. So that you're not getting too much of the black. And here I'm going to do this tone. 
of our red. And as you can see, mixing the red with the black gives you a nice reddish brown kind of tone. And this is called the tone. Now, if we wanted to, I can take some more of this black that we've got here. And I'm going to take some of the water out of my brush. I just hold the paper towel against the ferrule, which is the metal part. And that will take some of the water out of my brush. Plus, it seems to be a little too juicy. And so I'm adding in a little bit more of that black without adding any, any of the red at all, because I want to take it down to a deeper tone. And remember, your hue plus black is called a tone. So add very, very small amounts at a time, and that way you will be able to control what you are mixing. Otherwise, you may go way past it, and then you want to go back. You'll end up using half a tube of paint in order to mix it up. And let's see if this has gotten to a nice dark color. This brush is splitting. So we'll try it this way. Not enough paint on the brush. And I'm going to have to go back in and make it more opaque and use more paint so that it really gets into that color and I can paint it with a nice consistent cover. Let's see if this is a little bit better now. Not real great. Okay. They always say, you know, whatever can go wrong does go wrong. So I rarely have this problem. But of course, I have it while I'm on the air. So it just shows you some of what can happen. <laughs> but this is even a deeper brown that we've got from our mix of, of red and black. Now, there are all sorts of ways to get to brown if you mix complementary colors. You know, you'll usually get what I call mud. And um, so you can get all sorts of browns by mixing the complementary colors. And um, that will be mixing red and green will give you brown. Mixing yellow and violet or purple will give you brown and mixing orange and blue will give you brown. Unless you've got them in the perfect proportions that make gray, but that rarely happens. So we've got a tint, which is red with white. And we've got two tones, which is red with black with brown. Hi, Kathy. So glad you came today. Nice to see you. So the next thing I'm going to, uh, pardon me guys, I need to adjust my computer a little bit. There we go. The next thing I want to talk to you about are shades. And I'm um, just going to take a little swig of coffee. In my red mug, all color themed for the day. So shades are when you mix a hue, that's our red, with white and black 
or to say it another way with gray. So going to take some of our, some of the red over here, going to add some white and I'm going to add some black. And now, in fact, I think I will mix it with a palette knife. So you can see how to properly mix the paint. And um, I think I need a little bit greater quantity. So I'm mixing it with a palette knife. So when you have a palette knife, you kind of smush it all into a pile and then you press on it. Then you smush it into the pile again. These are technical terms, of course, smush, and then you press on it. So it seems to me we've gotten a lovely color there. I'm going to just hit it here. Oh, isn't that nice? It's kind of a violety warm gray. I need to clean my brush out. There's one thing I want to remind you, if you want to have clear, beautiful colors, make sure you wash your blood brush out thoroughly in between. And a lot of times you don't want a clear color, but when you do, it's important to wash your brush so that you have a nice clear color on it. I'm doing this kind of backwards. Okay. So we've got that beautiful gray there. I want to see what happens if I just have a higher proportion in there of white. I'm going to take some more white, add it to that nice color that we have there and see how we can change it. Because this is all about seeing how many colors you can invent. And I'm going to take more red. And let's see what we get using the same palette knife technique. They're getting much lighter. Much lighter and much redder color there. And oh, I like this one a whole lot. And I'm going to add this one. And see what it looks like. Now it's interesting because it's, um, because it has more red in it, it's a much richer I mean white in it, it's a much richer tone than the one next to it. And let's see what else we can get. I think I'll add another, another tint of red because I want to show you how you can go very, very light with, with your paint and get a beautiful light color just by mixing it with white and being careful that it's only white. I think I'm going to add a little bit more onto my palette here because we've got so many things mixed up. I've got some white there. And I will take just a little bit of red. In fact, I'm not going to take that much. I'm going to take the teeniest amount. You see that? I have just a tiny amount 
on my palette knife. And it's still pretty strong. Can you see me mixing that? I'm going to bring this a little further down as I mix this. There we go. I'm going to just stay away from that extra red. And in fact, I'm going to add some more white to it because I want to really, really, I want it almost white. Almost white. And I think I'm going to add even a little bit more white to get it lighter. This is the kind of thing that you might want to paint on the walls of a room that's basically white, but you just want to get a little bit of color in there so that it's not a completely white room. Oops, I got some black in there. We're going to stop mixing. Okay, so let's see how this looks on here. I got a little smudge of gray in there that I'm going to take out, and I'm going to take out some of the water. How that gray got in there. Sometimes it just does. So if you've got a steadier hand than I do, you'll get your line straighter. And if I worked at it some more, I get my line straighter. But you get the idea. I just wanted to see how how light I could get that. And we have a pink that's almost white as you see right here and let's do one more tone that's mostly black with a tiny bit of red in it and i'm going to mix this with the palette knife as well cleaning it off so i'm not polluting my color with any of the colors i had before If you can see, I've got not very much red in here, but I wanted to see how much it would take to just make the black a little less black and to have a feel of the red that we're using with it. Because sometimes you want black, but you don't really want it a dense, colorless black. So I think I've got that mixed. Let me clean my brush. And I'm going to make this my last square. But if you've got 25 squares in yours instead of nine, you can mix for an hour or two and get yourself a tremendous variety of color. Oh, this was not enough. I don't have enough on here. I'm going to have to mix a little bit more. There's my black. I guess I just didn't have enough paint. And that's always an important thing when you're, when you're painting, don't forget to use more paint. When it starts getting thin and you're getting, um, your brush is getting dry, go back and get more paint. It's something that I needed an instructor to tell me. You wouldn't think that I would need someone to tell me that. But I did. And once I started using more paint, 
my paintings got a whole lot better. So here we are with almost the black. Black takes a lot of paint. I mean, a lot of another hue to make an impact on it. And I wanted you to see what this black would look like if it just had some red in it, but was still black. So there we go, and I'm going to hold it up for you. Just to review, in the center, the red hue is our base color. Then we may, mixed it with white and made three tints. This very pale white pink, this more medium pink, and a darker pink and those are all called tints. Then we mixed it with black and made tones. So this one and this one and this one were tones. We got some browns, but we really got lovely grays when we started mixing the black and white with the red, and those are called shades. So we've got one there and one there. So I hope you'll try a magic square. It will teach you a lot about, here, I'll hold it up this way while I'm talking. It will teach you a lot about values. It will teach you a lot about mixing colors. Hi, Randy, thanks for coming. And um, it's really fun because it lets you explore all the colors you can make with not many tubes of paint. You know, if you just got yourself a few tubes of paint, you could really mix up a storm. So I hope you have a good time trying this. And uh, please, if you do try it, go to Art Sparks Creativity, that group that's my group, and post what you've done. I'd love to see it. And... Um, Feel free to join the group. We are there sharing our work, um, a critique-free zone. And please join my mailing list at karenfriedland.com. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye.